Well, I want to get to that in a minute because that number is false. But I want to get first to the principle behind this. And your aim is to protect a constitutionally guaranteed right. That's right. But voting is not the only constitutionally guaranteed right. And the right to own a firearm, which has been proved by the Supreme Court twice to apply to individuals, is abridged by the requirement that you show government ID in order to purchase one. And why are you not taking up that cause? Well, we're not fighting a Second Amendment case here. No, but, we're fighting to Okay, but, but should, it be, it, should it be required? Well, we're fighting to ensure that everyone has access to democracy. We want to make sure that everyone okay. can exercise their voice. But in, in our Texas. founding document, we're, I mean, obviously, you're not, this is not really about principle. I guess that's what I'm kind of establishing. If you believe that the requirement to show government ID gets in the way of people exercising their constitutional rights, then you defend them across the board, but you're not. So now to the question of 600,000 people. So if you don't have an ID, a government-sponsored ID, you cannot hold a paying job. You cannot have a checking account. You cannot have a credit card. You cannot board an airplane. You cannot stay in a hotel. You cannot get into many office buildings. You can't register your kids for school in a lot of places. You can't participate at all in American society. You're telling me in the state of Texas there are 600,000 people who don't have paying jobs, who don't receive any government benefits. I don't believe that. So expert evidence presented to the court. Five courts have now found Texas's voter ID law to be discriminatory in terms of its effect on African American but let's and get Latino to the numbers. voters. Where are those numbers from? I hear this all the time. There are a lot of people who don't have ID. If you don't have government sponsored ID, you cannot get government benefits and you can't have a paying job. You cannot rent a car, stay in a hotel. As I just said, you can't enter buildings. So how do we know these people exist? Where are those numbers from? They are citizens of the state of Texas who actually participated in voting. 600,000 registered voters were disenfranchised when this law was put into effect. But because they didn't have their IDs with them doesn't mean they didn't have IDs. So where's the evidence that there is a large number of people in any state who do not have government IDs? Well, there's no evidence of that. Actually. We're, we're actually beyond that question in this case because the Fifth Circuit, the most conservative appeals court, federal appeals court in the country, agreed with us. No, but let's, start with, let's, let's start with the facts because often in these stories, people in the press, because they're very shallow and aren't interested in actually digging, repeat the received wisdom. But I want to get to the core fact of this. This whole thing is predicated on the idea that African American and Latino voters somehow don't have government sponsored IDs. And I'm asking you, where's the actual evidence for that? What study shows that? Actual evidence that we put forth by our expert in this case and evidence that was before the Texas state legislature when they put this law So where does it come from? What was the study? And the what was books. the number? How many people in the state of Texas had possessed no government ID. Well, let's talk about the conceal and carry permit, no, no, for no. example. No, let's get to the core of this. You already allotted over that. You don't want to talk about it. That's fine. Let's get to the case that you're taking sides in. Where are these people? How many are there? And how do you know that? Uh, five courts have found the law discriminatory. 600,000 uh, registered voters were knocked off the rolls when the law was put into effect. And, and that is but undisputable have, okay, fact. But here's what's disputed. Uh, here's what's disputed by me and apparently by nobody else is that these people don't have government ID. That is what's up for dispute. It's a very different thing. If you didn't bring your ID to the polling place, it's very different from not having it at all. And there's no evidence at all that there are a large number of adult voting age Americans who don't have government ID. That doesn't exist. Do you have a, a so counterfact I, to bring out tonight? I want to be very clear. Yes. Our argument in this case has not been that all African Americans and Latinos and poor people and elderly are without ID. But how but many are there? But there are a lot of them. 600,000. And no, it's but, an undisputed but that's not, fact it is, it is Not only is it a disputed fact, it's not true. It doesn't show, as I've said three times, it doesn't show that they don't have IDs. We don't have evidence for that. And I'm just saying... A lot of people feel like there is voter fraud. We don't know how much because a lot of states don't require ID. Well, we Can you do. see the concern that people we, have? Well, we do. At the time that the law was put into effect in 2011, data showed that for the 10 years leading up to the adoption of the law, there were only two instances of alleged vote fraud in the state of Texas out of over 20 million votes Can I ask cast. you a question? If we don't require government ID in order to vote. How exactly do we know the extent of voter fraud? Oh, I'll answer it myself. We don't, do we? We know that vote fraud doesn't exist. Study <laughs> after study. <laughs> no, wait, and, how do and, we know that if we don't require ID, if we don't check? We know that everyone who gets on a plane is what, who they claim to be because we check, but we don't actually, know that. There's actually bipartisan agreement that vote fraud is a myth. Well, there are right? a lot of Republicans who say silly things. That doesn't prove anything. Even Paul Ryan himself admitted last <laughs> okay. month uh, that these claims about vote fraud are overstated uh -huh. and baseless. That's Paul Ryan's view, but we don't really know.